Bonjour tout le monde et bienvenue. Welcome everyone. It is great for us to be able to share together in this conversation as leaders of our Canadian Baptist family. My name is Terry Smith and I am on this call from Toronto, Ontario. I'm the head of Canadian Baptist Ministries. Hi everyone, Peter Reitz. I'm the Executive Minister for the Canadian Baptist of Atlantic Canada and I'm on the call today from Yarmouth, Nova Scotia. And I'm Diane Macbeth. I'm with Baptist Women of Ontario and Quebec and I'm calling in from Fort Erie, Ontario. Hi everyone, my name is Rob Ogilvie and I'm with the Canadian Baptist of Western Canada and I'm located in East Vancouver today. Hello, my name is David Rowley and I'm the Executive Minister of the French Baptist Union and I'm phoning in from Collinsville, Montreal area. Hi everyone, I'm Tim McCoy, the Executive Minister of Canadian Baptist of Ontario and Quebec and I am on the call today from downtown Toronto. Hi, I'm Sylvia Hegerman, and I'm the Interim Executive Director of Atlantic Baptist Women, and I'm talking to you today from Moncton, New Brunswick. Thank you all for joining on this call. It is great that we can be together. Uh, these are difficult and challenging times for us and for the organizations and the denominations that we lead. But we want to each uh, take a couple of minutes and give you just a little bit of an update about how things are going and uh, some thoughts that we would like to share. So we're going to uh, kind of go around the country and give a little bit of an update. Well, I'll just give you a brief update on Atlantic Canada. And I'm sure that our stories in some ways are just very similar to all of yours across the country. Uh, we're, we're in incredibly challenging times, but we're seeing... Uh, many of our pastors and churches uh, really becoming creative and caring and reaching out in their neighborhoods and their communities. We've heard some wonderful stories about uh, churches that have just advertised online to uh, just to help in any way. Uh, just contact us and we'll try to help you out, whether it's picking up groceries or doing errands or whatever. And uh, we're excited about some of those things that we see. We have a church that's doing, uh, basically has taken over the role of the schools and providing lunches and breakfasts for children who are at risk. And so mm. those are some of the good things we're hearing. At the same time, we, we get lots of anxious phone calls and emails about everything from finances to how our churches are going to be able to keep their pastor on or do, do they have to lay their pastor off and so we find ourselves walking with uh, both pastors and church leaders in all of these questions, trying in every way to support and care for them and, and to update them with as much information as we can and, and helping people to, to really do all they can to uh, love their neighbor by staying home and doing the thing that it's hard for Christians to do, and that is stay away from one another and not touching and hugging and gathering and all the things that we love to do. But uh, we're in this together with you. And we believe that uh, this may be a real time of awakening for us. As we see, a, even from our churches, a real call to prayer. Prayer, not just for ourselves, but for others, and for our nation and for our world. So uh, let's, let's encourage one another as we continue this journey. Thanks, Peter. Yesterday, I was thinking about the Old Testament story of Joseph. And what I realized is that he was able to help himself and his family and those around him because he kept listening hard for the voice of God and acting on that even in the midst of suffering, including when he at the lowest point when he thought he was going to be released from prison. And then that was extended for two years. And so at Baptist Women, we're think, thinking that over the next while, a lot of people are going to start to have spiritual questions. And uh, we want to help people be able to listen well and to respond from a secure place of the goodness of God. And so we're going to um, host a number of sessions that would have been part of our Declaring the Goodness of God conference. They'll be on the evening, one hour in the evening, and then on Saturday morning from April 21st to 25th, there'll be worship and speakers and workshops. Um, and the plenaries will be uh, recorded and posted at baptistwomen.com, so anybody can watch those, men and women. Uh, but the workshops are going to include some 
personal sharing. And so we won't be recording those and those will just be for women and you'll have to log in live to do it. So we know that for some people, technology is a bit intimidating. So there will be three login with Laura sessions so that you can practice ahead of time so that the technology won't be intimidating when the time comes. Um, and so all the links and the topics will be at baptistwomen.com because our prayer for all our partners really is that we would all be filled with the fullness of God so that we can be peacemakers wherever we are and whatever happens. Thanks very much, Diane. I'm really proud of the way that the CBWC churches have stepped up to embrace our new reality that the church is in. The reality that the church is the people, not just a physical building. One of our churches in the Lower Mainland has been using Zoom for their services. This past Sunday, they have a ministry connection with a church in Albania. So this past Sunday, they had their church in Albania join them, along with one of their students who is studying in London. At one point in the service, they asked everyone to unmute their microphones and sing happy birthday to a couple of people who were there. Great creative thinking. One of our churches in Winnipeg had a young woman who was trapped in Guatemala with about 30 other people. One of those situations where people who are slowly getting back to the country again, she finally was rescued on a flight through the government. But when the people land, they obviously have to go directly to their homes. This church decided that they needed to welcome her anyway. And so they formed a parade of vehicles outside of her home and welcomed her by waving and honking as she stood in her window and, and it warmed her heart. We have a church in Saskatoon who has begun to do Zoom prayer meetings three times a day, Monday to Friday, and are averaging about a dozen people or so at them. They hope to keep some form of this alive when things return to normal, whatever that might look like. I have a prayer request for you, and that's specifically for Alberta. The people in the churches of that province have been in a major economic recession for some time before COVID. And now with the price of oil dropping dramatically, even more are left unemployed and hurting. So we would appreciate your prayer requests there. There's a recent or a couple of years old worship song that's entitled Another in the Fire. It's this great, amazing reminder of the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego being thrown into that fiery furnace. But when the king looked into the furnace, he saw that there was a fourth person in there with them. Many of us today feel like we're in that fire right now. But let me assure you that we're not alone. There is another in the fire. And as people of hope, we cling to the fact that Jesus is the one who is with us in this fire. Keep well, and may the peace of God go with you all. Thanks, Rob. Uh, we are very encouraged here in, in Quebec, the way the, and also in Ontario and New Brunswick, the way the churches are responding, uh, helping each other with various tools, organizing virtual services uh, for smaller churches that don't have that, that equipment. Uh, yet, so we're really upbeat. Um, I'd like to say a few words of encouragement to, to all of us. Uh, you know, the word confinement today, uh, we're all feeling the impact of being in an uneasy place and we're deprived from our daily patterns of life, feeling restricted. Uh, forced to adapt and uh, with frustrations and boiling and surfacing. Uh, we toss and turn at night. Well, so did the psalmist. And strangely, if I can add a little bit of humor here, the squirrels in my backyard aren't understanding my efforts to teach them the value of distancing themselves from my bird feeders. We're all trying to do our best, uh, putting vast amounts of energy and time to care for our families, friends, and churches. And just in two short weeks, we've had to restructure our lives, take care of family, scramble to connect in as, as churches, and share resources and ideas and stories of our Canadian Baptist church family. And Paul's attitude and proactive spirit during his confinement and the powerful vision that came out of John's confinement on the island Patmos uh, provide a perspective, I would say, and give me hope. Uh, I've been spurred on by uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer who wrote the following in his letters and papers from prison. And I quote, the church is the church only when it exists for others, not dominating, but helping and serving. 
It must tell men of every calling what it means to live for Christ and to exist for others. And the challenge that we face today, locally and globally, is this here in Quebec and in Ontario and in New Brunswick. Will we now begin, and some are already doing this, begin to focus outward as the church of Jesus Christ to embrace the needs of the world beyond our own immediate circle? Uh, timing is everything, so goes the saying. I find it so interesting that this period of uncertainty comes as we are journeying together towards Easter, a journey where we encounter in the gospel accounts certain uncertainty, pain, questions, but with the resurrection as the final phase, uh, only to be launched by Jesus on mission. Um, this is our deep narrative and our starting point, our motivation to continue on, and our source of refreshing waters to sustain us and give us joy as we journey forward. So, mes amis, en route. Merci, David. Thank you so much for that good word. And man, looking around this screen today, Terry and others, I am so thankful to be a part of this big old Baptist family, which I realize we've learned more than ever in these past few days that the church certainly is more than a building. It really is the people. And as I think about our big old Baptist family, I think beyond pastors and denominational leaders, I think about chaplains in the military and in hospitals today. And I think about um, divinity colleges and camps scattered right across this country who are um, living into this new reality for themselves and are like us very concerned about what the future holds. And I am so thankful to be a part of this big old Baptist family because I believe that this could be our finest hour for the capital C church in Canada. I think that though we live in this crisis, it truly is a great opportunity for us. I think the church has for centuries been called out in the middle of crisis and we have been responding in ways that we see happening all around us. And I'm so thankful for scripture. I still hang on to God's word and I'm reminded today in Psalm 46 where we are assured that God is our refuge and our strength, always ready to help us in times of trouble and therefore we will not fear. And so I believe with the psalmist that we're gonna be okay through all of this. I'm confident of it actually. And I believe in the people that God has called into their communities here at CBOQ we claim that our mission is to equip and support churches and leaders as they engage in their mission from God and their community. And we have seen them step up to this task over and over again. And sure, there is incredible anxiety and concern about the future. But one bright spot for me is that I continue to see um, the resilience of the next generation and the creativity that is beginning to emerge from the hearts and minds of youth groups right across Ontario and Quebec, and therefore right across Canada, where there are students, young adults, teenagers, and even children who are coming up with the greatest ideas the church may ever see. So I'm excited about what might come for our communities and our neighborhoods because of the young Christians in our, in our midst and the young people that will sit around this table and this screen as Canadian Baptist leaders in the future. I'm inspired by creativity. I'm inspired by gatherings of prayer. And I am inspired by this hopeful anxiety that we feel about the momentum building for what the church can be in the midst of all of this. It's a privilege to be a part of this group, my friends and colleagues, but also a part of this Canadian Baptist family. Praise be to God. Thank you, Tim. I never thought that during the months of his interim executive director of Atlantic Baptist Women, that the country that I love would be experiencing anything like we're experiencing right now. The simple things that we take for granted have become big things, like going for groceries or leaving my house. I haven't left my house for three days. My husband said I need to get out, but I'm here. Part of what we're going through right now is a time of disappointment. We got our, our Tidings magazine yesterday, and it was our intermission edition. And as I was reading it, I almost started to cry because tomorrow we're announcing that we're canceling intermission. We're canceling our birthday party of 150 years. But we've already had people say, I wanna be on the planning committee next year because next year we're celebrating 150 plus one. 
<laughs> and that's what we're calling it. And actually, we're only going to be four months late in our celebrating our 150th year. So it's not a complete loss, but it's a disappointment because it's a time for our ladies to get together, to fellowship together, to pray together. And this year was going to be a big celebration, remembering the work that our Canadian Baptist women have done for 150 years. And as I said, it's, it's bittersweet, the fact that we have to cancel, but we know deep down in our hearts that, that it's the right thing to do because we just don't know what could happen at the end of May. We're gonna miss the visitors that we're gonna to have too. I don't know if Terry was planning on coming, but some of the other people from the CBM office were coming and we're going to miss our interaction with them. But there'll be other times for that. We've also had other disappointments as well. And, and I was told that this should be an uplifting time, but we've made some other decisions that are really hard. And so we've got to, to announce those in the near future as well. As we operate in these uncertain times, we're staying strong and praying. And Atlantic Baptist women are known for being prayers. When Hannah Mariah Norris got on that boat 150 years ago, it was because women of the Maritimes had banded together with her and prayed and raised the funds for her to go to Burma for the first time. And we're continuing to do that in our homes and with our families and with each other, we're continuing to pray. We all have a huge responsibility to those we serve. And I, I know that each one of us is taking that seriously. The decisions that we have to make are not easy ones and we covet your ongoing prayer and support. And encouragement as we go through these times together. Thank you. And if anybody in my area has any questions, please feel free to contact me. Mm -hmm. I'm here, my phone's always with me. Thank you, Sylvia, for those encouraging words. And uh, it's so hard to miss a birthday party, especially such a symbolic uh, and important one is 150 uh, years, but 150 and one, that, that makes sense. Um, I find it very fitting that I get to go last after Sylvia because the roots of Canadian Baptist ministries go back to the work of Atlantic Baptists and particularly Atlantic Baptist women who were sent out from our shores in Canada to respond to the Lord's calling in global mission. Subsequently, um, through the Canadian Baptist Women of Ontario and Quebec and through all of our Baptist partners. We at CBM have been blessed by the deep, deep ties that we have with our partners across Canada. And those partners include each of you on this call, and they include all of our churches, and they include all of the members, the faithful members of, of our churches that believe that God is still alive and doing something mighty in the world, and that nothing can thwart his, his plans. We like to say at CBM that um, God uses the local church to heal a broken world through word and deed. And I think that the times that we are going through and the uh, fear and uncertainty that so many people are experiencing here in Canada can be are echoed and perhaps even in many places of this world amplified when you think of the vulnerability of so many populations that we serve, seek to serve, the world is in a battered shape right now. And this is a time for us to be the church more than ever. We are trying to think through very proactively and not just reactively at CBM, what it means to minister to the most vulnerable populations. This morning on a call with our leadership team, we remembered uh, people in South Sudan that have been living through civil war and locusts and drought and famine, and now combined with the fear that comes with the coronavirus. Or we think of our Lebanese partners who have served valiantly in refugee camps in the Bekaa Valley as they've cared for Syrians and Iraqi who have had to flee their countries during times of civil war. And the church has been the church in spite of all of those hardships. Or a few months ago, when I was in the DR Congo, right at, in the city of Goma, on the very day that the Ebola virus um, struck that city, and I was able to witness how the church was able to minister in very difficult circumstances. I'm really pleased to say 
that our field staff uh, overseas are finding very creative ways to minister. They're experiencing a lockdown, a shutdown, that seems a lot more drastic than what many of us are encountering. Um, our staff in Bolivia are only allowed to go out of their house, I'm going to say, a half an hour a week. It's, it's very drastic what they're having to experience there. Um, but our staff are continuing to serve. We're, our partners are, are doing well, and we are in close contact with all of our partners. I want to end my little uh, update with what I think is the most wonderful good news that can possibly happen through this. And I'm basing it upon the testimony that we received from our partners in China. Two days before Chinese New Year uh, in late January, we received word from our partners there that um, their city and their area was being shut down, that they were going to be forced into isolation. And we were shocked to think that such a thing could happen in a big city. Now look at where we are in the world today. But God used the leaders of those churches in remarkable ways. To, they ministered, um, they provided hygiene and health and food for the poorest peoples in their communities. Out of the back of the pastor's car, they were able to deliver food over barricades so that people would be able to eat. And just two days ago, we learned that in one particular congregation that we work with there, dozens and dozens of people have come to faith in Jesus Christ through the coronavirus. And I think that God can be doing the same thing in every town, in every city, and in every village around the world. And this is a time for us to stand together uh, as the church. It's great to share in these stories together. And I'm going to uh, ask if Diane and Peter would lead us all in a word of prayer. Lord God, we trust you. We trust you completely. And so we pray first for healing. We pray, Lord God, that you would heal those that are sick, that you would protect those that are around them. We pray that you would bring hope to those who are in difficult circumstances, wherever they are in the world. Lord God, we pray that this would be a fruitful time in our communities. Lord, that people would search for you Lord God, we pray that you would mold us and make us ready to be able to respond with your love to those who are in need. And we pray that we would continue to see you with us in each thing we do. Peter's mic may be muted on our call. But it isn't muted for the Lord, and the Lord has heard your prayers, Peter. Oh, and sorry. no, that, that, you weren't praying for us. <laughs> You're praying to the Lord, and He heard your He heard your prayers, and we appreciate uh, the prayers of uh, so many Canadian Baptists. Uh, as we conclude our call, um, again, thank you. Merci à tous les participants. Ça fait vraiment plaisir d'être unis avec vous. Thank you, uh, each of you. Um, in the next day or two, uh, our Canadian Baptist family is going to receive a letter that we have co-written uh, that's a call for us as Canadian Baptists to stand united. And it's a call for us as Canadian Baptists to guard hope, knowing that the Lord is leading us through this time of uncertainty for us. It's not uncertain for him. And it is not unprecedented in the history of the church. And we can find great hope and reassurance there. Our letter will involve three calls to action. The first is a call for intercession. And we know that you are praying as Canadian Baptists. The second is a call to give. And if there was ever a time that your tithes and offerings and financial support should be directed to your local church, it is right now. Many of our churches are going to face perilous and difficult times, and they desperately need your support. And the third is a call to action to look around your neighborhood, a look across Canada, look around the world, identify the most vulnerable, and seek ways to respond uh, generously and compassionately to the most vulnerable. So thank you, my dear friends, sisters, and brothers. Uh, it's a joy to be able to do this, and we look forward to more conversations together. May God bless each of you, and have a good rest of the day.